One more step to make, final step. We call it contingency tables, frequency tables. It's basically just telling you that what I've just taught you, and I've already said it a few times, can be just applied in exactly the same way when we are not only considering three different samples or groups, but we could actually be a bit more um, intelligent that we, when we ask people, who do you want to vote for? We allow you to be undecided. So we actually allow people to be in three different groups, not only two groups. So there are not only two proportions that add up to one, there are three proportions that add up to one. So there are only, of course, two free proportions and then the remaining one where when I only have two groups, there is only one proportion in a way, because then we know the other one. But in of course, there are two proportions always, and now there are three, maybe only two, but three. It depends on how you put the wordings, right? There are three, but they all very always add up to one. We could make the hypothesis about, or the distribution could be the way to put it, or the three Ps. Here are three Ps here, three Ps here, and three Ps here. Would it be the same on the three different time points? That's the way it could be put here. That's one way to say it. Or, that's the thing to be aware of now, uh, such contingency tables, frequency tables, can be the result of different uh, experimental designs, in a way, different approaches here. It's very clearly a three sample situation as we would know it from three group one way and over actually that I think if we add up here, as far as I remember and I can confirm, we asked 200 people here, 200 people here, 200 people here. I decided that. I made a sample of 200 people there, I made a sample 200 there, 200 there. That's my decision. Three different groups where I want to compare the proportions in those three settings, right? We could make a different type of study that would provide a data table that if you didn't get the story behind it, you couldn't know the difference. We could have actually done a single sample, but then having measured two different categorical variables, for instance, I could have tested you guys on math, I will, that's right, usually I talk about testing on Danish, but why don't we just say stats, I will even more. I could have tested you on two different things in some testing, right? And then each of you would score a bad average or good on the math scale. And similarly, each of you, because you were measured twice, two different, uh, I gave you two different questionnaires, one on math and one on stats. I score you on each of those. And so each of you would have a score uh, on both math and stats. So 23 of you were pretty bad on both of those tests. Uh, 63 of you were pretty good on both of those tests and then everyone else were uh, in the other categories. So these are one sample but two categorical variable outcome. It's actually still a frequency table and we could put the hypothesis slightly different here. We could say, are there any dependency between your math skills and your stat skills? Or rather, the null hypothesis could say there are no relation between your math skills and your stats skills. That is a different way of wording things, but what we do is exactly the same. So in terms of the chi-square test, and in a way the conclusions doesn't really make a difference, it's just in, you should just be aware that there could be different background stories for doing something like this. The thing is, you could also decide to talk about this in a different way. You, you could say, how about all you bad stats guy? All of you who are very bad at stats, and all of you who are pretty average on stats, and all of you who are pretty good on stats, which are all of you guys in the room, of course. The other guys are those who are not here. Uh, 
sorry out there, probably you, if you're listening in now, you're in the good group, of course. Um, then I could compare those three groups and say, is there any difference in your math proportions, depending on whether you are among the bad stats guys or you're among the good stats guys, for instance. Your math proportions, are those the same between those two groups? Now I'm back to talking about the data exactly like I talked about this data table. So that's valid enough, but in this data table it actually wouldn't make sense to put it this way. It's a bit um, subtle and it's not going to ruin the world for you, it's just uh, kind of an information to you that these tables come with different background stories at this point. Here is the last method of the course, right? That it's, and it's a copy of what I just taught you 10 minutes ago. It's the same chi-square test where we construct the expected table according to exactly the same rule as I've just taught you. Now we just have multiple categories and multiple groups. And I do the same test statistic. The only difference you can see is that now the there are R rows instead of just two rows. Otherwise, it's the same formula as before. So it's exactly the same thing, exactly the same all along. The only difference is that when we do the statistical evaluation of this, we should use the right chi-square distribution for this to be valid. And this is number of rows minus one times number of columns minus one. Remember 10 minutes ago, the number of rows were two, R was two, so this was just a one, and in this way, what I tell you here match exactly or fits exactly with what I told you 10 minutes ago. And then we do a chi-square test, as we've now learned a few times. Again, the same rule of thumb applies to the expected numbers here. Actually, the R procedure uses the same rule of thumb, so if this is an example where it will help you. If you put in some numbers where this is not fulfilled, it will let you know that probably you shouldn't use this method. Um, so it's not, it's a, it's a standard global rule of thumb for when to use those methods. Still a rule of thumb, so if the expected is 4.7, probably it's still okay. Um, this was the next to last point. We have two more questions in our quiz. Five different groups were compared. What's the degrees of freedom to use? That requires some noise. That's pretty good. I was uh, worried that I was going to do the dance, but uh, luckily, not a hundred percent there, so no dance. Still, the music guy is doing well. <laughs> 